It's been a little while since we talked about Tesla as an artificial intelligence company. So that's something I'd like to loop back around to today, particularly in light of Elon Musk's recent comment about Tesla's role in creating an artificial general intelligence and how the upcoming Tesla bot will fit into a world where computer brains are equally as capable as human brains. What sets Tesla apart in this field is their prioritization on the real world integration of AI. So while most commercial AI systems are focused on automating computer based tasks, Tesla is out there in the world trying to automate physical mechanical activities. Driving a car through city traffic is the obvious one that's being worked on right now, but the same idea could transfer to other industries like agriculture, Think of a self-driving combine harvester or road maintenance like a self-driving snowplow. And with the advent of the humanoid Tesla bot, that same idea can be expanded to any task that is currently being performed by the human body, which include everything from painting houses to fighting wars. What could possibly go wrong? Well, a lot. And that's the other very interesting thing about Tesla. Elon Musk is only getting into creating artificial intelligence because he is afraid of artificial intelligence. In his mind, it's too dangerous to trust anyone else to handle the implementation, particularly not his fellow billionaires. That's not to say any of this is inherently safe. Artificial general intelligence is like the computer equivalent of nuclear fission. It's spectacularly useful and world-changing until it falls into the wrong hands and starts killing people, or in the worst case scenario, kills everyone. So let's dig into how Tesla is creating real world AI and how we learn to stop worrying and love the Tesla bot. So first off, let's establish the difference between the regular old AI that we all know and this much revered term artificial general intelligence. AI is basically the ability of a computer or a robot controlled by a computer to do tasks that are usually done by humans. For example, I have an Amazon branded AI speaker box in my kitchen. Mostly I ask it to set timers for me while I'm cooking. I could do that task myself using a watch or an app, but it's just easier to use voice control. Sure, I've just willingly placed a wiretap in my house that's connected directly to the real world equivalent of LexCorp, but it's a small price to pay for convenience. What my wiretap can't do is complete any task that involves critical thinking outside of its existing program structure. That's why this kind of tech is also known as artificial narrow intelligence. For example, today I asked her who would win in a fist fight between Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk. She said she didn't know the answer to that. I asked if she could find out. She didn't reply. And fair enough, not an obvious answer really. Elon would have longer reach, but I bet Jeff would fight dirty. I don't even know if he'd be able to legally fight because I mean, look at him, he's like 60. How does he look like this? Then I tried to simplify and asked her who would win in a fight between a chicken and an elephant, to which she replied, in the first half of the game, the larger animals were winning, which is more of an answer that I was expecting and kind of made sense. But either way, the point is that when you talk to these home assistant programs, they are very good at what they are designed to do. But anything outside that narrow tree of understanding results in a failure. That's why artificial general intelligence is so fascinating. This is the hypothetical ability of an intelligent computer to understand or learn any intellectual task that a human being can. In other words, to think like a person. We don't have to ever see a chicken fight an elephant to know definitively that an elephant would win that fight because we can think in general terms outside the known box. But before we get into the next part of the video, I'd like to take a quick moment to tell you about our amazing sponsor, Henson Shaving. We've worked with Henson Shaving a few times now, and we are thrilled to continue working with such an amazing company. Henson Shaving makes their razor products in Canada at their aerospace machine shop that has been making parts for the International Space Station, Mars Rover, and satellites for 20 years. If you're looking for a high quality product that is sustainable and great value, then Henson Shaving has you covered. I mean, they're building parts for the Mars rover. 
Of course, the quality is the best possible. What's unique about Henson shaving is that they use standard razor blades that are on average 10 cents and recyclable. They've been able to do this by designing the Henson AL13 to utilize the razor blades at the perfect angle and length, giving you the precision of a safety razor with the ease of a standard cartridge razor, all while eliminating chatter, preventing cuts, nicks, and irritation. The average Henson shaving customer only spends three to $5 per year once they own the razor, and the Henson AL13 is made to last decades. To get your own Henson shaving razor, Razor, click on the link at the top of the description or pinned comment. And if you visit the website now, you can use the code TeslaSpace to get a free 100 pack of razors by adding it to your cart before checkout. You'll be supporting our channel while saving yourself a lot of money and being sustainable. And now let's get back to the video. And that brings us back to Elon Musk. On January 18th, Elon wrote on Twitter, believe in the future, which is a great message, but seems to be more like the beginning of a stream of consciousness which flowed into an Evangelion anime meme that may or may not confirm that Grimes is pregnant with another one of Elon's children. Following that, Elon wrote, Tesla AI might play a role in AGI, given that it trains against the outside world, especially with the advent of Optimus. Optimus Subprime is the code name given by Tesla employees to the Tesla bot that they first showed us at the AI Day event in August 2021. At the time, Elon said that he wanted to make a humanoid robot that could perform labor tasks that are dangerous, boring, and repetitive. Each bot would be five feet, eight inches tall, 120 pounds, and just strong enough to do work, but still weak enough that an average person would be able to easily overpower it. Elon said the same combination of cameras and computer chips that allow Tesla cars to drive autonomously would also power the Tesla bot in its mission to become the new labor force. Now we're all probably thinking the same thing. If Elon is right and Tesla achieves AGI in a human shaped robot that's been trained in the real world, just like a human, then could a Tesla bot become as dangerous as a human? You or I might be able to take one robot in a fight but how do we fare against five or 10 of them at once? Probably about as well as a chicken against an elephant. That is to say, things could go bad if they're not managed properly. That's what Steven from Solving the Money Problem was getting at when he replied to Elon on Twitter writing, glad the foundational seeds of AGI are in the hands of a benevolent company led by someone who is aware of and extremely cautious about AGI gone awry try not to summon the demon. And Elon replied to say, we'll do our best, decentralized control of the robots will be critical. Now, there's a word that gets thrown around a lot these days, decentralized. And it's particularly big in the crypto world. Everyone right now is trying to get you to join their DAO, which is a decentralized autonomous organization. You might be familiar with the Constitution DAO that recently tried and failed to purchase the United States Constitution document at auction. Speaking of which, have I got a proposal for you? No, the Tesla space does not have a DAO, but we do have a brand new Patreon page that I'd like to direct your attention to just for a moment. Anyone who would like to support our efforts to make Tesla and Elon Musk centered content that is both informative and entertaining can now do so through Patreon. I'm not saying that you should donate, but your support would really mean the world to everyone here on the Tesla Space team, and it would help us in our goal of reaching higher levels with our content, and we've got some fun little perks over there, including some team face reveals. The link is in the description. Thank you for your time. So what Elon's getting at here when he talks about decentralizing control of the robots is similar to something that he talks about with Neuralink and that's decentralizing human symbiosis with artificial intelligence. Basically, Elon wants everyone to have a Neuralink so that everyone can have the opportunity to mind meld with a computer and gain the super intelligence capabilities that would come along with it. If there were just one single person or entity that had a monopoly on brain computer interface, then they would become a de facto ruler over civilization because they would be infinitely more intelligent and capable than any other human. But the more people who have that power, the safer it becomes, ironically. Take nuclear weapons, for example. When only one or two nations had the capability, 
it was a very big problem for the entire world. Now everyone's got them and nobody really cares. Elon knows that Tesla should not have exclusive control over the entire army of Tesla bots because that's too much power in one central location. Even if Tesla themselves never use the power of the robot army for evil, someone else might take that power away and then they could do evil shit with it. That's one of the only fair points that the jackass with the anti-Tesla New York Times ad is trying to get at. Even a very good and beneficial technology can be dangerous if it falls into the wrong hands. Around the same time, on January 18th, Elon tweeted, people do not yet understand how valuable an autonomous vehicle will be. And he is absolutely right. Just look around at how the majority of people talk about self-driving cars like they are some kind of joke. When this is an invention that has the capability to save millions of lives per year, while at the same time making urban life as we know it unfathomably more efficient. So if people can't even wrap their heads around that, then of course they are going to have no idea the value of an autonomous artificial human. We're going to hear a lot over the next few years about the Tesla bot from those same people who don't understand autonomous vehicles. Most people are going to want to tell you that the Tesla bot is just a scheme to take our jobs and make Elon Musk even more rich. And while yes, the bot will make a spectacular amount of money for Tesla and by extension will increase Elon's net worth, I can assure you this is not about making money or stealing jobs. This is literally about saving the economy as we know it. And in our context, the economy is based on labor. It's the foundation of everything. If the workers don't show up, then everything crumbles. Society crumbles. We are getting a little sneak peek at that right now. We're seeing what happens when just 10% or so of the labor force all get sick at the same time and have to stay home. All of a sudden, there's no one to drive the school bus, no one to make your coffee, no paramedic to come help you when you get hurt. It's pretty bad out there. Which is why Elon Musk wrote this. We should be much more worried about population collapse. Because what if your kid's bus driver wasn't just out sick for a week? What if he retired and no one came in to replace him? Well, at that point, a self-driving bus is going to become extremely necessary and therefore extremely valuable. Now we see where Elon is going. And there are going to be a shit ton of jobs that were designed to be completed by the human body that just can't be easily automated with a bespoke robot. There's nothing more versatile in nature than the human body. We can swim, we can climb mountains, we can chop down trees and solder circuit boards. So instead of scrambling to make millions of different kinds of robots to cover a million different human tasks, we just make one super versatile humanoid robot that steps in where the person left off. Seamless transition. And if that sounds crazy, Elon backed up his grim prediction with some simple real world figures. Elon wrote, last year, Japan had about 800,000 births and life expectancy is 85 years, which is impressively high implying future population of only 68 million, dropping almost half from the current population of 126 million. That is a lot of ghost towns and cities. And sure, most of you probably don't live in Japan, but this is a trend that we can identify in nearly every developed nation. Japan is just the country who are getting hit hard early in the game. It's coming for all of us. And that's not to say that less human beings couldn't be a good thing for the planet as a whole. I would absolutely say that the earth would be much better off with fewer of us on it. But our economy, the structure of our society is dependent on continuous growth. Even a small and temporary period of recession can be disastrous. Should we start doing something about that right now and begin to transition our inherently capitalist and labor-based economy into something more sustainable? Yeah, probably. But are we going to actually do it? Not a chance. So the day will come when we are going to need Elon Musk or whoever succeeds him to hook us up with a whole lot of intelligent robots. Otherwise, 100% for sure I'm gonna fucking die! Is that a little extreme? Maybe, but I really just wanted to put that meme in there. Anyways, let us know your thoughts on our robot future in the comments section below. This should be an interesting one. We might have made some inflammatory statements. 
If you're not one of the people writing mean things below our videos, then maybe you might like to become one of our very first patrons. We've got some fun perks, including our eternal gratitude, and we'll be adding more in the future. There's a link down below in the description. For more Tesla news delivered straight to your inbox, make sure to subscribe to our Tesla Space newsletter. We keep you up to date on all things Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and Boring Company in one quick and fun to read package. Link in the description to sign up. It's theteslaspace.com. And make sure to drag our emails over into your primary inbox so we don't get lost in the promotions tab. Also, don't forget to check out our new Space Race channel and subscribe over there for even more space exploration content. As always, if you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.